Good evening, everyone. So welcome to this community forum to hear about the potential plans for dairy school renovations or construction. Since we did not begin with a non-public, I would welcome a motion to go into public. So moved. A first by Jessica and a second by John. All in favor? I oppose. Motion passes. So I'd like to welcome everyone tonight. Sorry, that's a little loud. Tonight, LaValle Brensinger is going to present potential plans for the construction and renovation of the dairy school buildings, your schools. Over the years, our facilities have been diligently studied by subcommittees consisting of staff, administration, board members, and community members. But those reports did not yield, yield any action. With our buildings needing extensive work, the Dairy School Board voted last spring to hire LaValle Brensinger to study the state of our facilities and help us produce a facilities and educational master plan. Tonight, you will see the options they have come up with after inspecting our buildings, talking with administration, conducting surveys of staff and the community, and holding educational visiting sessions with staff and the community to understand how we use our buildings. The costs in this presentation are estimates, but show you the scope of the work needed. We invite you to share your questions and comments, but, no, but know this is not your last chance for input. The board is on a tight timeline because building aid applications are due July 1st to the Department of Education. Districts that make the best case for building aid can get up to 40% of their project costs covered. This would be huge for dairy. Building aid only comes up every two years. The board will vote this coming Tuesday at our meeting on which direction to take for the building aid application. Over the next year, the school board will work with the contractor to develop a final plan, which will be shared with voters in community forums and will culminate in a vote next March on a bond to cover the cost of the chosen project. For the board to choose the project that best meets the needs of dairy, both students and the community, we need your input and involvement. Thank you for coming tonight and please stay involved. With that, I'd invite Jay and Eric to the stage. Thank you for having us here tonight. And thank you everyone for coming tonight. Um, today's agenda for the, um, the meeting is right there on the screen. We wanna basically uh, focus in on the options of the master plan. That's really the focus, but we wanna do a little recap. I do see some familiar faces who are here in November. Thank you for coming back. And um, we just wanna recap some of what we've done and show you what we've been working on since then. Once again, I'm Jay Doherty. I'm a project manager with La Valley Brensinger in Manchester. Um, I've been working on schools for about 25 years throughout New Hampshire and uh, very excited about working on this school, uh, these schools. Um, I'm a product of dairy. I went through the dairy school system and um, actually graduated from Pinkerton right here in Derry. So this is kind of my hometown, so it's nice to be back. So thanks for having me. And this is Eric. Thank you, Jay. I'm Eric LeBlanc. I'm a project architect, also with the Valley Brensinger Architects. Um, I don't have as strong a local connection to Derry as Jay does, but I did get a really good sense for um, all of your school buildings, having gotten a chance to tour all of them uh, and do an existing conditions assessment last summer. So as I said, a quick project recap of where we've been and what we're doing. So. Um, we started, we were hired in the spring. In the summer, we did a building assessment. We went through all of your buildings. We went through um, with Jeremy and the, the facilities team. We went in attic spaces. We went under buildings. We went everywhere we could possibly go to understand your buildings, looking at structural pieces, looking at mechanical systems, and looking at just all the pieces that tie into the building. From that, we moved into the fall where we began a vision session where we began to understand what the school district's moving towards or what has been, have been working on in the schools and how we can make a learning environment that ties into that. Um, we did staff surveys to understand the building. We did um, administration surveys or interviews. And we also had that community input session that was last November. So thank you for those who were here for that. This winter, since the last time we've seen you, we've been developing concepts and options. We came up with a lot of different options, a lot of different concepts. A lot with that had many variations on it. And we began to analyze each of those to develop and whittle it down to the concepts we're gonna to present to you tonight. And that's where we are today, presenting the options and hopefully developing whatever we decide on or whatever the, the school board decides on into a project that we can bring forward to try to get some of the state aid money that's, that's possibly available. 
Um, the buildings assessment is the first thing we did, as I pointed out. Uh, we looked at all your schools. This is kind of a, a simple ranking, um, the colored dots, understanding the buildings, the structures, the systems in the buildings. Um, just you know, these buildings are old, they're tired. It's, it has nothing to do with uh, how they've been maintained. They're just old and they've, they've just um, surpassed the life of some of the pieces in them. So uh, South Range and Derry Village um, were built originally in the 60s with some additions after that. Um, just some of the systems are very tired in those buildings. Grinnell Falls after that with East Derry and Barker. Barker being your new school, which again is your new school but 18 years old. Um, so there are some signs of some things in Barker that we think need a, an improvement when we look at the overall building. Looking at your, your middle schools, obviously two middle schools here in town um, with Hood and West Running Brook. And um, again, West Running Brook, the building we're in right now, 29 years old. And then your SEU office and your maintenance building were also part of our charge to look at as buildings. And those buildings um, are definitely um, some of your worst here in the district. This, um, so this is just an overview. We're going to dive deeper into what each of these buildings looks like and, and how um, some of the things we found in a little bit. But that's just kind of an overview. One of the other overviews I just want to quickly point out is Lavalle Brensing are architects. So our job is to identify problems and identify solutions for problems. Our job uh, and, and our scope of an architect is not to give you a budget of how much something costs. That's a construction person, a construction estimator, a construction manager, or a construction company. The numbers we're going to present tonight that we're going to show to you are order of magnitude costs. That is based on a historical number that's the current market value of what projects cost in New Hampshire right now. All we have done is multiply that times what we've seen wrong to give a number of what these, the order of magnitude of these projects are. The next step would be to hire someone that can actually verify these numbers as we, dis, as we fine tune and come up with the design. So the numbers you we're going to present in a little bit are order of magnitude numbers just so you understand the scope of what we're doing. Uh, visioning, I talked briefly about this a second ago. We hired an outside consultant, David Stevens, who's a national expert on visioning to walk us through the process. Um, it, it began everything from understanding the educational vision and, and priorities of the, the, um, the school, and it moved into the built environment and what some of, some of the spaces will look like and feel like. These are some of the pattern languages that were developed from that, agile classrooms. As you look at these classrooms, it's furniture that can be moved around, spaces that can be adjusted, kids that can be grouped if they need to be working on group projects or adjusted, uh, very flexible environments. You look at these spaces, the, the, can everyone see the screen all right? Or is there a way to, to, to adjust the lights or no, probably not. Um, so you can see the flooring there, very simple flooring, um, natural light in the classrooms. Um, uh, very simple spaces, but just very flexible, uh, agile spaces. Classroom neighborhoods where, again, classrooms are working together and they create these spaces where students can break out and work together on small group projects, supervised, and um, um, the whole team learning environment. Extend that learning environment. So as we've been talking about these breakout spaces where if someone needs some extra help or students can work together, they can be pulled out of the classroom or they can be brought out to a, a, different, spirit, a different space. Students that are, um, can work independently or work um, as together. And these are those pull-out spaces. They also could be between classrooms, as you see in, in one photo there. Again, a very simple space um, that students can use or as the, the picture on the right illustrates that it could have some visual connection so that the kids could be in there uh, working on projects, but the teacher could still have great supervision on what they're doing in there. Maker spaces, hands-on spaces. So this is uh, STEM and STEAM, which is um, very important for our, as we looking at science and technology and math and engineering, the hands-on um, items. The right classroom is a very simple classroom, again, with some power in the ceiling to get, provide some flexibility as they're working on projects. They can pull it down. Um, so to create spaces that work like that. Um, enrichment spaces that also could be used by communities. So spaces in the school that could be opened up, um, that students can move and, and, 
be able to use, but also had that after hours um, ability to them for programs and, and for night meetings and for, for multiple of things. And the last one is sustainability. To think about our buildings, how we can save money on energy costs by making a more sustainable building. We also had staff input, and this is, was very important. As we dug through the staff input, we had several surveys from different teachers at different schools. Um, we got teachers, administrators, um, uh, people from, from all different walks of the school, which was really good to get a good cross-section of what the school environment is, paraprofessionals and others. As you can see, the things they wanted are really not that radical. They want furniture that can, that can be moved, and they want their built environment a nice built environment, walls and clean ceilings. They want um, storage spaces, mechanical systems, and just electrical so that they can plug items in. The, the schools were built before technology was where we are today. Some of the benefits, some of the, the spaces that they're asking for are small learning communities. Uh, we talked about that, spaces where they can work together with students. Um, uh, shared project-based learning spaces. We just talked about what those look like. Small group spaces, um, student-centered learning areas, and sustainable features. So again, these are, are very simple things to achieve, and these are what we're hearing from staff. We also dug in, we had interviews with the admin, as I pointed out, and we had uh, some common results we heard from several of the groups. And these are the, really the top five things we heard in the buildings. Lack of electrical, obviously the age of the buildings, just that electrical needs. The lack of small group, those one-on-one, -on -one, those calming, those meeting rooms, those conference rooms where you can work with students. The lack of special education space, as special ed education has expanded over the years, the buildings that were designed don't have those spaces that, that are, are needed for students to meet the standards they need. Lack of classroom storage. A lot of the teachers are using um, multiple projects and project-based. There, there needs to be storage for these materials and these projects that they're working on. And then one common thing we heard from a lot of them is there's just a lack of a presentation space. And that could be a, a small group for a classroom to be able to do something or multiple classrooms to get together to do something for the school or for the community. Um, obviously, we, we have Pinkerton up the road, but for this district to have a space. Um, right now we're in a gym that I'm getting a little bit of an echo from. Um, so it's just a space that could be used for, for all different types of presentations at different scales. Now we're gonna move into the master, part, master plan concepts. And this is really where we wanna dive into understanding our options. These are a little confusing, so I'm gonna try to go through them and break them down as we go. Um, the first group of buildings is really just one building, and this is Barca Elementary School. Eric's going to take us a little bit through what this building looks like. Thanks, Jay. So Barca is one of your uh, newer schools. Um, you can still see that, you know, even though it's a newer school in the district, it's 18 years old. Um, very well maintained, works very well. Um, what we're showing here is a representation of some of the things that we found as we were doing our walkthrough of the buildings. Um, what you'll find for this building, there aren't any significant issues that we found, um, being that it's relatively new and very well maintained. Um, typically, you'll see a series of exterior photos on the top row with some findings and then a series of interior photos um, also with some findings. So you'll see from the couple of photos on the top row um, we're just noting some issues with staining on the exterior, potentially some roof drainage issues um, where canopy meets brick. Um, just some of those old tired systems like the exterior doors, um, clearly in need of replacement. And then really the bottom three photos looking at some of those interior finishes. So the state of the, the finishes on the stair treads and the risers, the uh, plastic laminate window sills, and some... Um, settlement that's actually occurred under the slab that's then telegraphed through, through the finish floor. Um, really when we're looking at these items, these are not indicative of uh, the maintenance that's taken place at these buildings over the years. They really are just uh, building age, building settlement, 
um, and finishes wearing down over time. And th this is actually a series of photos from when our engineers toured the building. So while the architect is kind of looking at, you know, the building as a whole, the exterior envelope, and a bunch of the interior spaces, um, we had a set of engineers that would go in and look at the mechanical system, give us an evaluation of what um, the HVAC system was like, the condition of the pipes. So what you're seeing here and what you see in many of the schools, even in some of the newer schools, is that as these HVAC systems approach 20, 30 years of, of age, um, they're actually approaching the end of their useful service life. That's not to say that those systems have failed to, to this day, uh, but that is to say that there are published standards for many of these systems, and given the age of the systems, um, you can expect to have to replace them in the near future. So you'll see in the top row an example of a, a boiler that's towards the end of its service life, um, some rooftop exhaust fans, um, and this one, the bottom right photo, again, a newer sprinkler system in the building, but there are some service issues with that in terms of pinhole leaks that we can see um, through leaks in ceiling tiles and, and staining finishes in the ceiling. So the option, so this is the floor plan now that you're seeing of, of Barca. We're actually not proposing any significant uh, renovations or additions to this building. Um, so what you're seeing is we're showing a potential area where you could expand in the future if needed. But really the feedback that we got in this building were incremental upgrades that you could do over time, improve the acoustics of the building, um, improve the site circulation. Um, but really this building is in great condition, not re recommending any significant upgrades. So the next group of buildings we're going to look at are East Derry and West Reddingbrook. So East Derry, kind of one of the middle-aged schools built in the 80s. What we do see in buildings that were built prior to the early 90s is we do have some accessibility issues. Um, so you'll see in the bottom row of, fo of photos, we did take note of um, plumbing fixtures and bathrooms um, and um, spaces that are simply too small for maneuvering clearances for wheelchairs or people with other mobility issues. Um, and then in the top row, you'll see some uh, exterior photos where we've taken note of the condition of the site wall. If you ask any teacher that teaches on the other side of that tromb wall um, in that building, they'll tell you that they have heating uh, issues in their classroom. Um, and then again, a very common issue with stairs is we don't see compliant handrails or guardrails. And again, as our engineers did their tour, they're noting things like the fin tube system is towards the end of its useful service life. Um, we do have uninsulated ductwork throughout the building, um, old electrical panels that are in need of being upgraded. Um, you'll see very common throughout all these buildings is lack of um, electrical outlets, which is what Jay was referring to earlier. Uh, so that's a pretty common thread you'll see. And for East Derry, we are proposing some uh, additions and renovations to this building. So again, what you're seeing is the floor plan of East Derry. Any areas shown in red would be ad additions. Any of the darker purple areas are more intensive renovations where we're, we propose um, it, moving walls or doing a si significant reconfiguration of that space. And any of the areas in lighter purple is considered light renovation. And that'll tie back in later when you start seeing some um, order of magnitude costs. Those, those costs have associated associations with them. So really for this building, we'd be looking at um, an addition to expand the dining room, which is undersized based on DOE standards. And then a small addition to some of the classrooms on the back wing and that could accommodate your ASD and IELTS programs, um, which require their own restrooms, own changing rooms, and they just need a little bit more space than, than a standard classroom. And then you'll also see some pockets of renovation where we'd actually like to take one of your standard classrooms and turn them into small breakout rooms. Um, so you'll see that on each floor in the wing. So those are some of the programmatic elements that we're looking at. But you'll also see addressed in these plans are the physical deficiencies with the building. So we've made it a point to highlight areas, um, like in this case, the exterior envelope with that tromb wall, on that self-facing wall that's um, a mechanical issue. Um, we would address that as part of this concept. 
So as, as I was talking about cost earlier, this is an order of magnitude cost based on the pieces that we see need to be replaced um, as we look at the building as the pieces Eric just talked about. When, when we look at industry numbers at the moment right now, this building's ranging between 12 and $16 million to upgrade these pieces. Again, we haven't done a full design yet, so some of this could be scaled back or, or changed slightly. We're just understanding what the, the industry order of magnitude is right now for a project like this. And again, these are today's numbers, so um, as, as we all understand what's happened just in the last year with escalation of cost of everything, numbers increase every year. So it's typically about a 6% increase we're seeing per year um, on escalation. So as you think of these numbers, this is an order of magnitude cost of where we are today. If we start to phase projects and think about it, just keep it in the back of your mind, some of these numbers would adjust depending on when it falls into a timeline if we put all these together. So this one's about six, 12 to 16 million. Um, as we, oh, I'm sorry. So the next, next building is West Running Brook Middle School where we are uh, today. Again, one of your newer buildings, but you can see the age, it's, it's actually almost a 30 year building and that 30 year mark is a critical mark because you'll see in the more detailed summary in the report that mechanical systems typically have um, a published 30 year lifespan so some of the notes that we took on this building, some of the things we noticed on the exterior, some staining on uh, some of the um, entry elements. We did notice some um, potential water infiltration at the roof level, um, both um, around the two-story classroom addition, and we see some failing precast elements on the gymnasium. Um, and then the bottom row of photos, again, we have some accessibility issues with plumbing fixtures, see some staining in the ceiling from uh, potential above ceiling water issues and then again some of the older finishes through the building we understand some of these finishes actually being replaced as we speak with um, floorings and ceilings that are just tired and then some photos from when our engineers walked the building the first one is actually um, a note that the structural engineer had about seismic requirements for buildings um, so there are more stringent requirements today for how um, buildings are structured. So some of the walls in this building he would recommend is upgrading with seismic clips for those walls. This is, I'll note here that there's, there's nothing um, extremely urgent about any of these repairs. They're really, there's, not, there's, not, there's no life safety issues with the items that you're seeing. They're really items that should be addressed over time and uh, should be considered to be repaired over time. And again, you're going to see some photos with um, older boilers, corroded pipes, um, un uninsulated ductwork. Um, this building in particular has some older HVAC units on the roof um, that have really reached the end of their, of their service life. So for this building, uh, we actually have a couple of options. The first one is, again, these are a response to some of the programmatic changes we're looking at. So again, the darker purple, more, a little bit more intensive renovation, we look at changing some of the lecture hall spaces into uh, family and consumer science rooms, more flexible use spaces for you. Um, and then we also got feedback that some of the computer rooms aren't fully utilized, so we actually considered turning those into the small group rooms that we've been looking at and some of the other concepts. Um, and then a few minor things like infilling the floor on the second level to bring those um, second floor team group areas like the first floor. And then we also had a second option for this. So you heard Jay talk about um, some feedback we got earlier about a lack of kind of a district-wide presentation space. So with this being one of the more centralized buildings in the district, um, it could be a good spot for a potential landing spot for a significant um, district-wide performing arts center or auditorium um, that could really satisfy that need. So everything else you see about the graphic with regard to the existing building is the same in this option, but it's really considering could we do um, a larger scale addition with a performing arts center. So we have um, two numbers up here. We have the, the changes Eric first talked about, which are about between five and eight million. That's not getting the whole building, that's fixing the systems we talked about. It, that is working on the areas Eric pointed out. And then we have with that auditorium, that presentation space. That auditorium would be um, the, the, the renovations we talked about plus the auditorium would 
probably be between 12 and 16 million. So those are the order of magnitudes for those. So no, now this is where we tie back into the chart that I was talking about. So we're suggesting um, that both of these buildings are, are great. They just need some, some help. They just need some renovation to them. So we're suggesting in all four options that these get renovated. Um, Time-wise, when that happens and the extent of the renovations still can be tweaked a little bit, but we're thinking that these are, are candidates to be renovated. As we look at the next group, group number three, we really dive into three of your elementary schools that um, are in a little bit different condition. Can I ask you a question? Sure. So when we had our presentation as a board, um, was that a week ago? Grinnell was in group two. How did it get moved into group three? Uh, Boston School showed up. And that's, that's how it got moved to group three. So okay. The, the, the groups, uh, just so everyone understands, the groups aren't necessarily the the need condition. They're, we just broke them up simply so when we go through the chart, it makes sense when we talk about moving pieces. So the, the groups don't tie necessarily into um, how bad buildings are. Okay, I just okay. thought this was what we were seeing tonight, and that's my confusion, I guess. So that first building is Grinnell, uh, one, one of the, the great historic buildings in Derry. Um, 1950s building, the original piece, but there are also a number of vintages over the years. Um, again, as you can imagine, a building that was built 72 years ago um, or even 36 or even 14 years ago might not be equipped for um, the technology of a modern classroom. So some of the issues that we took note of on the exterior, uh, there was a uh, basically a pre-engineered building on the back for the kindergarten classrooms. Um, due to the construction quality of that, we'd recommend actually potentially considering removing that. Um, and again, look at some exterior conditions, the exterior doors to the gymnasium, um, and to the left of that, the um, accessibility of that gym right now currently doesn't have its own accessible entrance. Um, and again, the bottom row of photos all have to tie in with um, accessibility. So those undersized bathrooms um, aren't ADA accessible. Currently, the stage doesn't have any kind of lift or ramp to access it. Um, and again, a very common issue with handrails and guardrails at the stairs. And some notes from engineers, the first two are from a structural engineer about the condition of the chimney um, and checking out some cracks. Um, a very common condition you see in older buildings with backboards being attached to um, unreinforced concrete block walls. Um, and then again, some mechanical elements. You walk around the building, you see some of those old radiators uh, and the controls of those radiators are well beyond their ser useful service life. Some of the old air handlers in that building, um, some very old um, fuse box fuse box electrical panels in that building, um, which should all be upgraded. So for this building, again, you'll see um, uh, the floor plan of Grinnell. You'll see in the red uh, are some proposed additions. So you actually see an overlapping area where the kindergarten classrooms are. So we would propose demolishing that, um, that prefabricated building uh, and providing brand new kindergarten classrooms. Um, and then you'll see a small addition um, off of the corner of the gym. That would actually be a separate entry, a separate accessible entry for the gym. Um, so that actually could get greater use by the public. It could have its own accessible entry, and you wouldn't have to go through uh, the main entry of the school after hours. And then what you're seeing throughout um, are pockets of heavy renovation, and really they're focused on uh, those undersized, non-compliant uh, restrooms associated with the classrooms. And then you'll see um, those standard classrooms too that, as you'll see in other concepts, we propose taking those classrooms, actually breaking them into smaller group rooms, some of those intervention rooms. Um, and then we propose renovating a spot next to the stage so that you could have uh, lift access uh, and make, make that stage accessible. Um, overall though, we would be basically touching every part of this building and it would be a like new building with new roof, new mechanical system, uh, new finishes, all that. So as we went through this building, um, we met with the committee um, two weeks ago, three, three or uh, roughly. Um, at that time, we, we looked at a bunch of the different options, and we were asked to, to 
to, to look at the order of magnitude for this. And this has changed a little bit different from what we saw before because we did go back and we recalculated based on some of the comments we heard from, from that meeting. So this is coming in about 16 to 20 million. And that has to do with everything Eric just pointed out, upgrading all the system pieces and then the spaces that he just um, talked about. So next school is Derry Village. Again, we're looking at uh, building that the original building is from the 60s with an addition from the 70s um, and and then a later addition in 2000. So it'll come to no surprise if you've if you walked around this building or driven by it, the 70s, 70s edition is really falling down. So a couple of photos you see in the upper left um, show the state of the exterior materials of that building. Again, um, Jeremy's crew has done a, a wonderful job maintaining these structures, but really the, these finishes do have a, a service life where, um, you know, we can't expect to maintain them forever. They need to be replaced. Um, the photo on the upper right is actually the 2000s edition. You'll see that issue on the sister school at South Range with some failing precast elements. Um, and then again, you a couple of photos on the bottom related to accessibility, um, restrooms that are simply too small for wheelchair access, non-compliant plumbing fixtures, um, and then um, some old finishes. And then some photos from the engineers. Again, the cantilevering of the backboards. Um, this building had some older rooftop units that are at the end of their useful service life. A um, couple of the unit cab heaters in, uh, in the classrooms are at the end of their service life, some old electrical panels. This building actually has a sewage pump in uh, the kitchen area that I know has been a nightmare <laughs> for facilities to maintain over the years. Um, so that was noted in the report as well. So one of the options for this building is um, we would look at a series of additions. So you'll see a couple of red areas for the kitchen. We'd really look at bringing, again, bringing that up to DOE standards, right sizing that kitchen because right now it's, it's too small. Um, one of the comments we got for this building and the sister school, South Range, is that there's no sense of entry, no heart of the building, um, and a lot of the administrative, administrative spaces are undersized. So we are showing a brand new entry, a new heart, a new student commons to that building. We would also do a, a new classroom addition at the end of the building. That classroom addition that you see at the end is actually replacing the 70s edition at the bottom, which is what we would propose demoing. Um, and then the light, the, uh, again, the darker purple areas in this building, more intensive renovation that would require some uh, relocating of walls, relocating and uh, renovating bathrooms, and uh, the lighter the lighter purple is um, upgrading finishes in lighter renovation. So again, this building would, you know, would be a like new building, but we'd 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 essentially touch everything in there. Um, as Eric pointed out, we'll we'll try to make this as like new as possible, but still, it it, it is an older building that would have um, some pieces to it that we obviously. We're not going to adjust the structure. The structure's fine in that building. We're not going to mess with things like that. Um, so when we look at the industry standards for dollars per square foot for renovation of this type, we're about 27 to 35 million for a project like this for this school. So South Range, again, a lot of these photos will probably look pretty familiar to you. Uh, this building does have a unique issue with the envelope and um, some potential water infiltration that's damaging the grout and brick and actually causing bricks to pop off the, the facade. Um, the issue with the precast uh, sills, um, some finishes, some cracked finish flooring, um, and again, um, non-accessible um, plumbing fixtures and toilet, and toilet rooms. Similar issues that our engineers noted with cracking at the chimney on the roof. Um, some, some very old uh, HVAC pumps used to serve some of the air handling units. Um, the rooftop units are very old. You can't actually read the nameplates on them because of um, the, the damage over the years from, from UV. Um, and again, some, some old electrical panels. And a lot of these buildings you'd see in the detailed report that um, all of the circuits are, are basically fully used for all the classrooms. So it's very difficult to, to in some cases, upgrade um, the electric elect electricity needs in, in many of the rooms. 
So this concept will look similar. Again, right-sizing that kitchen, making it um, much closer to DOE standards. Um, again, a new um, entry to the building, a new commons, expanding those administra administrative spaces, the nurse spaces. And again, heavy pockets of renovation at restrooms. Um, again, we propose taking a couple of those classrooms and, and turning them into small, great, uh, small breakout rooms, intervention rooms. So as we look at the population and the, the amount of students in this school and we look at the projections, um, there are less students in this school. So it doesn't have the, the added wing that we're showing on the other school that we're, um, that, that's getting added. However, the, as Eric pointed out, the facade and some of the, you know, the exterior of the building, that brick, is really in worse shape than, than South Range, excuse me, than, than Derry Village. So South Range has um, some other added pieces that tie into that. So as we look at dollars per square foot, there are more renovations that would have to happen at this building. So 26 to $34 million, it's a little bit less than the other one, but there's less square footage when you add the square footage, um, you compare the two buildings. So how that ties in, one option, option one we're showing here, is just to renovate those buildings, to fix them as we talked about, or to even just work, um, work on defining that scope, but it would be just to renovate those buildings. We do have three other options that tie in here, and we're going to dive, dive into those now. So the next option actually uh, proposes combining the populations of Dairy Village and South Range. Um, so what you're seeing here is the um, footprint of Barker School, which would be about the size school that would be needed if those two school populations were combined. Um, so really what you're seeing is the site here behind Derry Village um, near West Running Book near the SAU um, that could be a potential landing spot for that new combined school. Um, the tricky part about this is it would need to be phased so if this option were elected um, you would need to look at building that new school. That new school gives you the flex space to then do uh, renovations at the other schools and to then uh, demolish buildings that are that would plan to be demolished after that. So in this case, the new school would be in the back. Um, then you could shift populations, and then the space that Dairy Village currently takes could then be used to to locate those fields. So both options um, have that as kind of the main component. The option on the left is just that. The option on the right actually adds in the added component of DEEP, um, the early education program. So we did factor in added square footage of that, and that's gonna factor into the cost. Um, and again, that actually factors back into the Hood School, which is where that program currently is. So looking at the, the two different costs here, we have without, without the DEEP program, without the preschool program, uh, 55 to 65 million for a new school. A new school with the DEEP program, we're about 60 to 70 million for that new school, similar to what Barker's size is. So as we plug that into our matrix here, um, in group option two, we'd renovate um, Grinnell, Derry Village, and South Range now would go to that new school. So we would uh, demo Derry Village eventually so that we have space for fields in the front of the school, and South Range would be sold. Option three, we'd renovate Grinnell, Derry Village would be demoed. South Range would be reused for another purpose that we're going to talk about in a little bit. And obviously we'd have that new school that would house the population of both Derry Village and South Range. Now there is a fourth option that the subcommittee talked about um, earlier this week that we're going to present right now that has, a, that has to do with these, these three schools and a new school, how it ties into it. So another option that was considered is uh, instead of combining the populations of Derry Village and South Range, you could actually combine Derry Village and Grinnell. Um, and what we're looking at here again is the floor plan of Grinnell. We'd actually look at using one of the, one of the wings of Grinnell to house the SAU. Um, so when you take uh, the approximate square footage of what you would need for the SAU, we could take over one of the floors in the classroom wing at Grinnell 
Um, and then again, the rest of the building, there could be opportunities to um, to reuse that building for district needs or to, to find another use uh, that the, the town or the city could use um, for the remainder of the building. So with this option, um, selling Grinnell would be the, the option for and then obviously Dairy, demoing Dairy Village so we could build that new school and South Range would be renovated and students would be put back there. Um, again, that new school would house both the populations of Grinnell and Dairy Village. I do want to point out, as we showed you the numbers of order of magnitude earlier, that Grinnell is in, um, as we looked at the renovations that are needed in that building, that's a much um, better shaped building than the other two, other two buildings. So keep that in the back of your mind as, as we talk about this later. The next group of buildings, oops, the next group of buildings here are, um, is Hood. Um, Hood is, as everyone knows, a building that's been added onto year after year after generation after generation. It has many different lives uh, and many different programs in that building. It currently houses the, the DEEP program, which is your preschool program. It houses um, your charter high school that sits in that building. It also houses some of the IT, the, the SAU IT staff are in that building, and has many other things that happen in that building. So it's really a workhorse for this district with everything that goes on. So all options, we're going to renovate Grinnell in some form. The question is, um, how do we do that and how do the other programs tie into it? So uh, Gilbert Hood, again, what, one of the oldest buildings in the district, um, 1950 original building, been added onto over the years. Uh, the 2005 edition, one of the more recent uh, building projects in the district. Some photos from our existing conditions tour, looking at the, the condition of some of the doors and windows that are in need of replacement, some site elements like stairs and railings. Um, again, many of the buildings prior to the early 90s, so much of the 1950s as well as the 1970s buildings. You do have accessibility issues, plumbing fixtures, uh, maneuverability issues around doors uh, and bathrooms. And again, exit enclosures, compliance stairs and handrails, exit enclosures. And then some of the issues that our engineers noted. Um, we did take note underneath the original part of uh, the 1950s building, some condensation on the steel. Um, which which does pose a long-term risk for, for rusting of those structural elements. Um, looking at some settlement, even in the newer 2005 edition, settlement in the slab, which is once again telegraphed through the floor finish. Um, some older HVAC components, some rooftop units, um, the locker rooms, which I'm told get very cold uh, in the winter and the pipes are actually in danger of freezing, um, and some old electrical. So this building does have a few options. Um, I'll, I'll try to take you through each of them and, and help make sense of them. The first one really is keeping uh, Gilbert Hood uh, the way it's configured now, but looking at renovating parts of the building. So we propose light renovation throughout most of the 1950s building. Um, a more a heavy renovation would be required throughout the 1970s building to really reconfigure those spaces um, and then bring them up to modern standards. Um, and again, you're looking at three levels of, of light and heavy renovation for this building. Uh, but all your programs would stay in this building as they are now, including the next charter school and um, your early education program and the district IT offices. So the next option, um, very similar scope of renovation throughout. Again, light renovation in the 50s building, heavier in the 70s addition. The difference is we would actually look at moving the SAU to the second floor um, of Gilbert Hood in the 70s building. What we're proposing is a small addition at the front of the building, which would be your uh, public facing SAU offices. Um, and really the goal there is to um, maintain separation between any offices that, that have a public interface so the public doesn't have to go through the whole building to, to get to the offices they need to. But then the second floor of that 1970s building would all be private offices associated with the SAU district offices. 
um, and your district IT would actually stay in place in this case. So because Hood has so many options, so many variables, there's really a range here until we nail down what we're doing, um, exactly what we're doing here. So we're between 30 and 45 million to do some of the things we talked about. Um, again, this can be tuned back or it could be phased in um, depending on what we choose and how we go forward with, with some renovations here. So how that ties in to the big master plan here is obviously, as I talked about before, across the board and all the options, this gets renovated. Deep in the option one would stay there, stay exactly where they are. In option two, they would move to that new school, the new elementary school that we talked about earlier with the addition on that. In option three, earlier we talked about reusing South Range. This would be where Deep would go. It would be moved or be reused. They would move into the reused South Range school. And in option four, again, they would stay where they are. The charter school would stay there. They have a, a home on the lower level of that school and they would stay there. This would, depending on what option we choose, would give them some space to expand in that building. And then as we talked about option two, that front addition piece, that would be the SAU would be added to this school. On to your last set of buildings. And these are the, the maintenance building and the SAU. And really, we really don't talk much about these buildings because they're not educational buildings, but these are really some of your worst buildings in your district. Um, we're not gonna dive too much into that, but one of the things we're strongly suggesting is that you build a new maintenance facility. If anyone hasn't visited the maintenance facility or it's right down over the hill and it's definitely worth a stop by. I don't know if Jeremy, you wanna to give tours or, or can, can sign that up, but it's a very um, unconducive space for what they're trying to do. Um, as we look at districts throughout New Hampshire, the, this is really um, not what we would suggest any district have for a maintenance facility. So we think that's really a, one of your higher priorities and I know it always falls lower on the list because it's not educational space, but it should be a higher priority for what the maintenance staff is trying to do for all your schools. Excuse me, all your schools. <clears throat> the other building is your SAU space, and everyone probably knows where that is, again, on this road, not too far from here. Um, the outside of the building looks beautiful. It's got a nice um, face to the, the part that faces the street. However, there is a portable space in the back that is really failing. If you ever walk around that building, you'll obviously see that pretty quickly. If you go in the basement of that old, beautiful um, uh, building, you'll see structural me members that are being held up now the way they shouldn't be held up, but they're structurally sound at the moment, but we're just really strongly suggesting that building um, be moved out of and be renovated for another purpose by another group in town. So where would the SAU go? That's the question. So either the SAU could be an option one, be part of that new maintenance facility, in option two, we could, um, again, sell that building and move the SAU into the hood area we talked about. In option three, we, again, sell the building and we move them into South Range. So South Range would now house um, the DEEP program, the preschool program, and the SAU in that same building. Or we, um, again, sell in option four and move them into some of that space Eric talked about in Grinnell as an option. We put together some, again, order of magnitude. We haven't sat down with staff to determine all the pieces that tie into the maintenance building or the SAU building, but in uh, similar districts, this is a similar uh, maintenance building. So it's between three and five million. And once we, again, dive into that, that number might um, decrease or, or change depending on what that program really is. And to add the SAU into that, it's between about five and $8 million to add in addition to that, the building you're seeing there that has all the SAU staff that we're talking about. So this is a chart that shows everything together, and I'm sure we'll come back and look at this in a little bit, but I did wanna dive quickly into phasing and how this possibly could work if we look at the options. Option one is pretty much everyone stays where they are. So phasing, we'd have to be very careful of how we move students between the building or get some portable spaces that we can move students to while we renovate different areas of the buildings. This will be a longer term phased approach to make sure we could hit all these schools. And we'd obviously wanna take the higher priority schools um, first if we did option one in renovation. 
we do have a couple other options we want to talk about. Option two and option three both show a new school. So if we um, actually two, three, and four both show a new school. So option two and three show that option for um, show that option for the um, for both Dairy Village and South Range, and then option four shows it for Dairy Village and Grinnell. So I'll have Eric take you through option two and three and how we phase that. So um, option two and three, phase one. Um, th so this, these are the two options that, um, these are two of the options that involve the new elementary school, the combined elementary school. Phase one of that really is building that new elementary school. What that does is it, it gives you the flex space to, to move those student populations. Um, without that space, it's, it does become a little more difficult because you simply don't have the space to, to be able to move those students around. Um, so really, step one, phase one, is building that, that new combined elementary school in maintenance building. So this, this is kind of a little side piece that we just want to understand some of the process right now, what we're doing, what we're going through. State aid definitely plays into this, and I just want to talk a little bit about how the state aid process works, especially with the new school or any project we're thinking about. So the way the state aid process works is back um, in, in um, January, we had a preliminary application that was due. Um, uh, we, we did the preliminary application, which got us in the queue for being able to submit. On July 1st, we need to submit a package that says this is the first project or this is what we want to do if we want to move something forward. It happens every two years, this process. So if we miss the July 1st, two years later, they'll, they'll again come up with more state aid or another um, state aid process. So by, by July 1st, we want to get that application in. We want to have a great application because it's a rank system. So all the other towns and districts that are submitting applications right now will also be ranked. On January, the beginning of the year of 2023, January, the state building application ranking system will come out, or the rank will come out. We'll know how we place compared to everyone else. And that has to do with a point system that ties into safety of buildings. It has to do with condition of buildings, it has to do with energy efficiency, it has to do with all the pieces that are deficiencies in your buildings and how you're going to solve them and how you're going to fix them. So we want to rank as high as we can because the state, what they do is they begin at the top of the list and they begin to give funding to each project until they run out. So wherever we fall on the list is how likely we are to get funding. Here in Derry we have the option of if we get ranked high, we have an option of getting a 40% funding for whatever school we, or whatever project we put forward. So that's very important that we want to do our best job as possible to, to get as high as possible in that ranking so that we can have an opportunity for that funding. Um, after that, then a year later in March, this building would be bon, um, bond vote. We put it out in front of the, the taxpayers in the community to get a consensus that we want to move forward on this. After that, we'll need a period of design that will take basically the end of that year. It will go through that year. And then 2024, January, that January, February time is a great time to be bidding. We're looking for contractors. People are looking for summer work. They're looking to begin projects. That's when we get our best costs. So that's when we want to be bidding our project. So we're bidding it through the spring. And then as soon as students are out, we'll begin construction on something. The construction period will probably take a year, a year and a half, so that August 2025, whatever that first project is, if it's the new school we're showing here, that's when that will open, that first, first project. So from where we are today to 2025 is a long time period, so we have a lot to do in that little bit of time. That was just a little aside to explain why tonight's meeting is very important for us. So kind of getting back on track of, the, of how we look at phasing. Phase one was um, to, to build that new combined elementary school. Again, that gives you the, the flex space. What that allows us to do at that point is to move into phase two, which would be uh, a renovation of East Derry, uh, Grinnell, Gilbert Hood, and West Running Brook. 
So again, once you have phase one, you start to have a little bit more square footage, a little more flexibility to be able to move some of these student populations around to get in those buildings um, and do some of the renovations and upgrades um, that, we've, that we've been showing you tonight. Final phase, phase three, um, now that You've, you've done the new school, now that you've done those renovations, um, we'd really look at set, selling or demoing the remaining buildings. Um, so in this case, Dairy Village, in both cases, would be demoed to make way for the new school. Um, and then we'd look at selling or reusing South Range in the SAU building. And if you remember early on in the presentation, we didn't have any significant uh, building additions or renovations to Barca, but there are, there are some recommended upgrades. Again, you can reference um, the very detailed existing additions report that talks about some of those upgrades that are needed for that building. So as, as you see, option four, the difference here is what we, what we were talking about before between shifting the population of South Range versus Grinnell. So again, this will look very familiar. The first phase in that, in that scenario as well is building the new elementary school. Again, it gives you that flex space to be able to move populations around. Phase 2A of this would be to renovate South Range Elementary School because again, this option we'd be reusing South Range. We'd, run, we'd look at renovating South Range as opposed to Grinnell. Um, in East Derry. Phase 2B would be to renovate Gilbert Hood and, and West Running Brook with those changes that you saw. And then Phase 3, selling and demoing the remaining buildings. Um, again, Derry Village would be demoed to make way for the new elementary school. Um, and Grinnell could uh, be sold and used for other purposes, uh, for, for instance, for the SAU building. And again, finally, the, the last phase of that, or ongoing phase of that, would be upgrades um, at Barca Elementary School. So I kind of briefly explained the state application project just a uh, process a couple of minutes ago. So where we are, the feasibility report, the visioning, and the providing options, um, we're, we're just about coming to the end of that. That's what we're presenting to you tonight. And we put it into the school board. Um, a couple weeks ago we're, we're happy to come back and talk more about those um, moving from there if we want to hit that state aid deadline is that box you see down there for that 40 percent there's a bunch of things we need to do and um, uh, so I'm really glad you're here tonight to hear your input and your comments to, to help us or help the school board um, pick or choose or help them define the way they want to go forward so a little bit about the timeline again from the beginning of the year to now some of the important pieces coming up is that um, submission to DOE, which happens uh, July 1st, that we're really shooting for. And we really need to engage a construction manager, you see right above that, and um, get them involved to give us more accurate costs on what we're talking about. And then obviously um, pick a direction of the direction we want to move forward. So that's going to be happening pretty soon. Um, once again, I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. I know everyone's really busy, so I appreciate people coming out tonight, and we, we look forward to, to hearing your, your questions and comments. And I'm sure the school board, um, Eric, if you want to take back over. Do you want to manage that? This time, my apologies. At this time, I invite members of the public to come up if you have questions, and Jay and Eric are here to answer them or comments. Name and address. Is that okay? Yes, please. Darlene Morrison, Brady Ave. Um, thank you. I, I'm going to flip through my uh, notes here for a quick question for some questions. Um, so, in, on um, the second page here, it says um, important general notes about how you're not you, you do a construction estimator, and it's uh, you're not a construction estimator. Um, I guess I've, I've mentioned this in the past. Um, coming, working in a larger elementary school building right now, 
Um, one of the things that was unexpected um, and that we've experienced is the amount of staff you need and to get adequately staff a larger elementary school when you're combining little people in a larger building. Um, and so everything on here is got a, a, a general cost of what it's going to cost for um, a new elementary school. But uh, my question is, has it been given any thought on what it's going to cost to adequately staff a, a new elementary school, uh, especially um, a building with, with that, having that many kids in it? Um, and you don't have to answer all this right now, but just food for thought. Um, the other piece of it is, um, can you use, is the state aid something you can um, apply for for just renovating all the buildings? I don't know if that's. So to answer your first question about the size of the school, this project was built on the concept that the new school, if that was the path chosen, would be the same size as Barca. It would not be bigger than Barca. So it would be a Barca modeled school. Um, and one of the options were, with the new school being built, um, it says selling, uh, one of, uh, selling, demoing the buildings. Is it taken into account that more, possibly more housing can go there where more kids can be then added to the schools? We would need to do some redistricting. The schools right now have unequal populations. Okay. Um, and yes, we did take into account Davis demographics did work on our expected population. The, the major building that would be demoed would be Derry Village, which we would put the fields that we're going to displace from building a new school in the back. So when we say demo, that's that's the one that really ties into that. And if I can just answer your other question, which was about your second question. Uh, using the... State aid, yes. Yeah. So state aid, we can use state aid for, for many different options. Um, the, the question is how strongly will we rank? We want to put as strong a, a submission together as we can. If it is a renovation, we, we can submit for a renovation project too. Um, again, it's a rank system with other school districts and how that plays into it, but that is an option that we, you can apply for state aid for other projects. Okay. Um, is, I'm looking at your designs. Is there a, um, it, does the cost include what it would also cost to like revamp the driveways and the parking with with putting all these additions on yes yes so it does the cost yes. that's but the general cost that's on there does include that it does yes so okay. we per percentage when we looked at each of the the different uh, buildings we looked around the buildings to see if we'd be displacing parking or um re, re, you know uh, loop roads uh, fields anything that is in the general area of that we also had a civil engineer walk the site to understand the issues and we we have those so the numbers we did show do are more be, more than just the building there are all the surroundings around the building yes okay and then um i have another question oh so i know you gave the phasing option if a new school was built what is the rough estimate of what the timeline would be if you just renovated all the buildings Th that's that's a, a very good question. I don't have the exact answer because we really have to figure out how we move students mm -hmm. um, and, and how that plays into it. There's, at the moment, there's the four options we show, but if you, you remember, there's a lot of sub options that tie to that. Mm -hmm. um, for us to be able to dive into that detail, we, we kind of need to zero in on a little bit, you know, a finer path there. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we could work with the, the school district to figure out how we can move students around to do a complete renovation of all the schools. It would definitely take much longer because we could only bite off smaller chunks. Mm -hmm. If we had a new school, there's obviously a whole school we can move to be able to renovate off the school and then move them back or however we do that. So um, to do a occupied renovation, it allows, you know, it's it's much smaller, a couple classrooms or a couple, you know, pieces of the building, and we'd have to move students through that. So it is a little bit more difficult. It has been done, and it definitely would make a much longer time period to do it. So that is a very good observation. And does that mean that the, um, the because the timelines make, probably would add years to it, as opposed to the timeline we saw up there for a new school, is does that uh, price, lock in at a certain 
No, it, does, it doesn't. So again, we're, we're not we're not building it, so we're not we're not giving you any uh, exact prices. But just the industry, um, it's just material cost. As we've all seen, um, trying to put fuel on our cars, um, trying to get materials shipped to our houses. It's just it, the industry costs have just exponentially grown, and they're just predicted to to do increase every year. So whenever we build that project, whenever we put it out to get someone to give a, a price on it, they're going to use that year's numbers. Um, so a, a prolonged project, yes, each of those mini projects would have a substantial change every year. Okay. And when when is the board going to be voting on what option you're going to be going with? There will be a meeting, well, at our regular board meeting on the 12th, we'll take direction from this group and have a discussion and then give some direction to Lavallee Brensinger. Okay. But that is just in order to apply for building aid because we have to meet that July sure. 1st deadline. But you would have to make a decision before applying for the building aid, Yes, correct? we do have to make a decision. Okay. I just hope you really take into consideration adequate staffing if you were to go the route of consolidating any buildings. Um, I, I live it every day and you need you need the help in the in the building with, with more more kids combined. Thank you. Thank you. Lisa Hooker, New Orleans Hill Road. Um, first, thank you. I know it was a ton of work to go into that. Um, I absolutely love the idea of a new school. I don't see any point in spending $35 million on this one and $35 million on that one when you can build a brand new one completely up to all the new codes for less. I absolutely hate the idea of losing our um, neighborhood schools. I, it would, I know when I was a kid, I grew up in a huge city, we had neighborhood schools. You could walk to school, you could play in the playground, you knew your neighbors, people watched out for each other's kids. I, I don't like the idea of kids having to go all the way across town to go to school. So I, I hope would really consider keeping South Range because the kids should have a neighborhood school. Uh, my other question was, and I know you guys don't do the whole cost thing, but you keep saying average 6%. That was probably a really good number before COVID happened. And now we're looking at numbers like 12%, 17%, 22%. The, the building cost numbers are astronomically going up. You are right. This this past year it has been about ten percent when you average all the pieces. This year has been a very well. The last two years with COVID has definitely been a different number, but the industry standard as we look is about six percent. But these last two years have been absolutely crazy. You're absolutely. Yeah, right. I, I looked yeah. it up when you said it because I was like, no, no, that's not right. <laughs> and and I looked it up and those were the numbers that were so. The numbers that you, so you still based yours on a six percent average and not like the current trends of triple that, like double and triple that. It, it's it's a very good question. So, from from all the construction companies we're talking to, this huge increase, this ten and twelve percent you're talking about, mm -hmm. is not going to continue on for the next five six years. It's everyone. Again, crystal ball stuff, and I'm not yeah, yeah, a no, crystal ball it, person, so I'm, I'm just taking what people are telling me. Mm -hmm. They're saying it's going to balance back out okay. to our 6% that we've been seeing in previous years. So that's what we use as a basis of what we were um, told through the industry. Okay. Um, and uh, again, I, I'm not an estimator. I, I, no, as we, and I, as I one of the parts that. is to get I just wanted parties. to make sure that our numbers were as, as somewhat accurate as we could get them. So if you're basing, because you said you take you know, industry standards, somebody else built a school in New Hampshire and similar sizing and, you know, but if that school was built in 2015, <laughs> that those numbers are not no, going to be. These are hot, uh, I mean, okay. LaValle Brensinger does a, that works with a lot of school districts and these are the numbers that we're, we're working with right now okay. in other school districts. There. Perfect, so, thank you. Um, also, um, I love the idea of having an auditorium that the kids can actually use because they, they can't use this. And I absolutely love that. Please look at the option that doesn't take the courtyard away because I love seeing sidewalk chalk when the weather's good and the kids can actually go outside. 
Um, when the fields are too muddy, it's the only place they can go outside and be kids. So please look at the option that doesn't take the courtyard away. And I also love the idea of putting the deep kids with the littler kids. So I think that's an amazing option. And the SAU should have a book. I love the building. It's gorgeous. You guys should have a book space. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Brian Giricello, 6 Rollins Street. Just a quick question on uh, option two and then option four. South Range Elementary, is that serviced by town water and town sewer? Or is that? Sorry, I'm just going to get back there so we can see. So option two and option four? Yeah. I'm looking at the cell portions of either South Range or Grinnell. That's the decision between the two. I don't remember off the top of my head. Do you or Jeremy South Range? South Range has water and sewer, town water and town sewer? Okay. But that's it's more in a residential neighborhood, correct? And I'm thinking, even though I hate to say it because both my, my daughters and my wife attended Grinnell School, I think the wiser decision would be to sell Grinnell because it is serviced by water and sewer and it's close to Crystal Ave. So you could kind of do something with that um, and fit that in if you sold that. Um, my concern was if, if South Range didn't have water and sewer, you'd get less money for it. So, and any idea of what the... the the sell values would come in? Has anyone calculated that at all? Or? At this time, we, we, we haven't. We, um, I think before we were going to go that far, we wanted to get yeah. kind of a, an understanding where people wanted to go before we went down there. Okay. And then one last question. Where would uh, the SAU building go in option two? Oops, I'm sorry. I'm just going to go back to a little chart here. So in option... In option two, the SAU would be part of the, the hood building. We do that addition in the front of hood that okay. we talked about. Oh, part of that reno. That's the reno side. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Elizabeth LaFosse, Trent Road Dairy. Um, Lisa actually just mentioned a great question to me. Um, she had to leave, but um, the new building proposed that would combine the two elementaries, would it be um, solar ready? Um, I want to say yes, because we are net zero and we're working really towards limiting our footprint. So I think that's something that a lot of residents would like to see. I don't see that that wouldn't be an option, but that's something that we, a lot of people would like um, to have incorporated into the design if we were going to go with the new the new facility. We haven't gone into that level of detail, but I love that comment because I think as we move forward, we will we will see what that would add, which it probably isn't isn't much um, to add solar ready. So a power purchase agreement or some kind of solar could be added to that building very easily. So we can keep that in the back of our minds as we move forward, if we move forward with that option. So Fantastic. thank you, that's good. Fantastic. Yeah, like I said, I think I know there's a lot of people that are really trying to get on board with that. So that'd be a great addition. Thank you. Thank you. Would someone else from the audience like to come up? Uh, hi. Um, my questions have. Sir, to could you just please oh, give sorry. your name and address for the record? Sir? Sorry, Grant Gifford, uh, 27 Olson Road. So, one of the things that we're talking about is schools that are going to be aging out with the renovation plan of option one, how far out would we expect it before we'd start having additional problems that would need to be addressed? Because each of these options might buy us a different amount of time. Do we have any ideas where the next fail point would be post-renovation? Uh, Jack Burke's more familiar with the buildings as, as the existing conditions, but we definitely know the roofs. We're having some, some roof failures already. We can obviously see it with the stained ceiling tiles and drips that are happening there. So roofs are probably one of the things we'd, we'd want to do because that's kind of the, the cap to your whole building. Once you start to lose that, everything that's happening inside that building um, really becomes something that we have to have bigger issues. Uh, so roofs are probably one of the things that 
if we were just doing a standard phase to each building, we probably want to jump around a little bit and make sure we had good caps on all these buildings before we did um, uh, not just uh, fixing things, but if we did more renovation, actually renovating the spaces inside. So I know that's one big piece. Um, there are some things on South Range, as you can see in the, the photo with some of the facade pieces. Our structural engineer probably would suggest we do some things to, to pin back some of that um, uh, moisture that's getting behind that wall and making some of those bricks loose. So there's some pieces there that I think if we did a phased approach, um, we'd want to address uh, as either a sub project or, or move up closer on top of the list some of those old pieces. If there's anything else, Eric, you want to point out? Yeah, I would. I guess I would just say we'd have to really try to prioritize what buildings need the most work or what systems need the most work. In a lot of cases, um, the buildings have gone under significant. Um, system upgrades like mechanical systems. Um, East Derry had relatively recent mechanical system upgrades, but there are components of that system that are still original to the building. Um, and I know, I know, for instance, like the electrical system um, that was flagged for that particular building. Um, and other, yeah, other components that come to mind: the um, the, the sewage, <laughs> the sewage pump in the kitchen at South Range comes to mind. Um, it's other issues with exterior envelope that we saw with um, with West Running Brook potential infiltration at the roof level. Um, some of these things, admittedly, they, they really need just to amend a little bit. What I'm sure. what I'm asking about is I think all those things were included in your option one plan. Those renovated changes. Sure. I'm saying if the school district decides to go with option number one, completes option number one. I'm assuming we don't get as much time before we have to do additional work as we would if we shifted to a new school plan. So I'm wondering how much time do we have post option one's completion before we have the next major failure conditions? I know that's crystal ball, but it's you could state it more along the lines of how many years less you might think from um, option two, three, and four. So I can't give you an exact number, but I, I think the, when, we, when we think about your question, is obviously we are going to be renovating um, buildings that are, are older. The structural is old. We're not going to replace that structure. Um, we're not really changing the footprint of these buildings. We're not um, doing a wholesale, um, ripping everything out in the inside of these. So yes, there are older pieces that are still going to remain that are fine right now, but they are 50 years old. Um, you know, th there are pieces that are older, 50, 20. Um, so those already have a life of deterioration. They're not at a point right now that they're, they're bad or need to be replaced. But as they've already deteriorated to a certain point, they're not at failure mode or not even in the, in the future failure mode, but they've already have a life to them. When you build something new, as you're talking about, that's brand new. So that's like starting at day zero. So that has that time period up until the other school is already at beyond, if, if that makes sense. So you have a much longer life with a newer building than to renovate or fix or make like new of the other buildings, if that answers your question where I'm trying to get at. That, that does answer the question, yes. OK. Um, a scenario that's not on here that I don't know whether or not it was considered or if there's some reason I've completely there might be something that I don't know for information that makes this non-feasible, but um, going to the community school element, um, if Derry Village was, we went through the new school plan, but instead of doing a combination of two schools, it worked as a, rent of, a replacement for Derry Village that incorporated both the SAU building moving into it and the auditorium option um, for a communal space for the school district in that one building. That would give us one building that has moved into the new generational age. It maintains the community schools at the different areas. It does mean that we're carrying to other elementary schools that would eventually need to be addressed as well. But it also allows you the phasing plan of having space to do the rest of the renovations as you go. I don't know if that was uh, not a plan for a reason I'm overlooking. <laughs> It, it was it was briefly looked at. It was we looked at um, if we did something with Dairy Village that was just to fix Dairy Village, 
when we looked at the cost of doing something for Dairy Village and then just renovating both Grinnell and South Range, when we added all those numbers up, it was very high. Um, we didn't exactly look at putting the SAU as part of that. That's that kind of a different sub sub idea of that. But when we did look at building just a building for the the Dairy Village population and then adding the other ones up, the like I said, the numbers were very high, and it um, um, it didn't it didn't play out when we when we looked at the overall picture. The other piece is um, the the district is is looking at numbers of operating budgets and, and how that plays into it. If we sell a school or get rid of a school, yes, the the the, the staff in that, the new building, the bigger building, would be more, but it wouldn't equal the amount of staff and the amount of administration that it takes to operate two buildings. So there's some savings to, to combine that I think the district's also looking at as, as a major piece of this. So I think we, we didn't look at the exact puzzle you're, you're talking about, but we did look at those pieces um, in, in a way, if that makes sense. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Does anyone else have a comment or question for Jay or Eric? If not, Jay, Eric, thank you very much for your time tonight. And thank you to all the audience for coming and learning. We will be discussing this again on Tuesday night, and we appreciate you coming out and learning. We've been learning about it. And at this point, I would, if no one else has anything to say, I would welcome a motion to adjourn. So moved. First by John, second by Paul. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries.